Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back into the studio. Before we begin this week's video, let me remind you of the workshop Mitch Shea, the director of the sculpture program at the Florence Academy of Art and myself are holding on figurative sculpture. The workshop will be held from July 27th to August 7th at the Florence Academy of Art, where we both work. Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or 9 to 16 if you prefer the 24 hour system. We'll be teaching you how to sculpt a half life size figure from life and a three quarter life size torso as well. Just to be clear, this is an in person workshop, so you have to be able to make it to Florence in order to participate. The spots are very limited, so be quick on the draw here. I'll leave a link at the top of the description below the video. You can also shoot me an email if you have any questions, and I'll leave my email address in the description below as well. And uh, I hope to see you there. Today's episode is a bit of a confession in many ways. Sometimes, when we sculpt or when we do anything for that matter, we set out with goals and ideals. But the sad truth is that no plan really survives execution, and that's the case here. One of the things that I aimed at trying to do with this series was to make sure the process was as linear of a process as possible with very clearly defined steps to make it a little bit easier for you to follow. And I've managed to do that to a certain degree, but of course today we end up diverging a bit from this ideal as we need to rethread some of our steps in order to make the sculpture better. One of the reasons I decided to keep this part in and address it head on instead of glossing over it and editing it out is because there is no two ways about it really. Everyone makes mistakes. Actually, a better way of putting it is that everyone who participates in this sort of process has to face their mistakes and shortcomings head on. But the only place that this ends up being truly reflected back on you is in the final product. So a mistake is not really a mistake unless you leave that mistake unattended. Which is what I'm going to be doing during some parts of this video, attending to my mistakes that is. It's also a feature of the process and part of what makes the process so powerful. We don't simply attend to a question once. We readdress the same question several times throughout the work and by doing so, we end up with a more nuanced answer. That's going to be a large part of this episode and it might seem like a mistake, that I've made a mistake that I have to correct. But in reality, it's a feature of the process and a very important one at that. In the beginning here, the work focuses on the core of the sculpture and I'm kind of working with two hats on in, in many ways, or on two separate issues at the same time, if you will. One being continuing the blocking in further and further away from my first decision, which is the core of the sculpture, which is the pelvis, which we represented by sculpting a box in the beginning of this video series. The second being readdressing the areas around the box and redrawing or reestablishing the decisions I made there in the beginning. So in many ways, going back over the top of some of the answers I previously found and decided on and checking if they still hold up to scrutiny and perhaps improving them as well. Some of that comes in the form of adjusting the contours slightly. You'll see some pieces of clay on the lower abdomen, for example, indicating where the new contours are going to be. Remember that heights are tough to adjust, so I've been very careful when placing those, and hopefully I don't have to move those. The width, however, I know I can easily adjust, especially when it comes to pulling them outwards, making the sculpture wider. And so I've purposefully made the figure a little too slender to begin with, knowing I can grow outwards later. Once the upper torso and the legs begin to develop, I get a better sense for the overall and then I will adjust the contours that I made in the beginning from there. We've discussed this in previous videos, but I do have a method when it comes to the widths from the front and the back views. I use the box to reference off of, the width of the box to reference off of. But when it comes to the depth, in other words, the width from the side view, there is no special rule and I try to simply work visually increasing the width from the side view until I feel it properly represent the reference that I'm following and, and trying to, to make. The new contours are left hanging for a little bit because I don't want to jump head first into something I'm unsure of. 
that could easily lead to me making the figure too wide and having to, to rake back the surface, which I would prefer not to have to do. But once the decision has matured a little bit, sat there for a little bit and I've checked it a few times, and I feel confident that the contours are in the right place and at the right width, I will progress forward by turning the form from the contour heading back away from the contour. Doing this, I don't want to blindly follow what drawing decisions was made before regarding the forms and the eternal information. I try to double check the drawing, double check myself and see if there is some possibility for improvement. And usually I find that there is. At the same time, I'm not blindly adding a lot of clay. I'm not properly observing really for volume yet. That's decisions that I end up making very late in the process. But there is something to be said for common sense when it comes to volume. So I am adding volume, but I'm not observing it in detail yet. And we'll get back to, back to this point a little bit later on in, in this video. Some people have an aversion to the rake as a tool for clay sculpture. And some people love it too much, I think. Now, I've discussed this in, in many videos on my YouTube channel before, but as you can see, I clearly do not have an aversion to the rake tool. The rake is the easiest tool to get from a somewhat rough surface to something much more refined and definable. Now, I'm not sure if definable is a word, but by it, by saying definable, I mean what I'm looking at can be understood as being in somewhat of a close relation to the reference that I'm looking at. So they look the same, essentially. By cleaning up the surface, I'm increasing the resolution of my sculpture. This is both very helpful and potentially dangerous, as higher resolution will reveal more mistakes. It can be done with intention, which is what I'm trying to do here. It's a step in the process that's there to serve a purpose, and that purpose is to allow me clearer vision when it comes to comparing sculpture to reference. I don't think a rough sculpture can be properly compared to the reference, at least not on a very specific level, because the sculpture is by its nature rough and not specific. This is not to say that jumping into rendering right away is the way to go either, because that rough step serves a very important function. The rougher part of the process allows you to focus on what's important at the time, which is gesture, overall proportion, the contours, and not the internal information, for example or at least not the specifics of the internal information. But at some point, we must progress beyond this in order to progress the sculpture towards a more specific resolution, to a more finished sculpture. Of course, that is if you are after a result that is specific to your reference, which of course I am. The cleaner surface shows me more and shows me what's wrong with my drawing especially regarding the internal information. Which brings me back to contours sometimes, because contours are not as separate as you would think. The contours are impacted by the internal information because they are the same thing, just observed from separate views. So in other words, contours from one view is going to be internal information from a different view. For the most part though, the majority of the work that gets done once the surface is slightly more refined is redrawing of the internal information. How the forms meet each other and what kind of lines or shapes they form can more easily be dealt with once the connection or transition area is more clearly defined. And usually this means adding more complexity to the transition or edge between forms. We had an entire episode dedicated to internal information and we spoke extensively about shape design in that episode. Now I'm essentially making sure that the shape design was correct and was good. And that it survived the journey from rough blocking towards a more refined surface. Often this journey, that journey, is where people run into problems and lose track of what was set up well in the beginning of the process. So not blindly charging forward, but taking a second look at how things are turning out as you progress is key in order to succeed at the transition from rough block into refined surface. Drawing is a key element of this because with drawing we can easily see the planned changes and once we feel confident in those changes we can execute them in clay. 
In the early rough stages, this is hard because in many areas there is nothing to properly draw on. There are gaps between our forms and so there is no way for us to properly draw on the potential changes. By the nature of working in this fashion, we end up with a slightly wrong result when we block in. Mostly right, but we can't get too specific simply based on how we blocked in the figure, the technique that we used to apply the clay. There's no way for us to be hyper specific yet, and that is a good thing and done on purpose so do not bog down the process at this stage for too long. Instead, focusing on the rough block in so that it's in place everywhere, or at least mostly everywhere, before pushing forward with the next step in the process. The idea being that we have something rough that we can then improve upon, and not something that we instantly try to get right. We try to get it somewhat right before we improve it and make it very right. At least that's the rough idea. With clay to draw on, I can redraw the forms a little more specifically, and even if I later end up having to adjust my contours, I can use the more accurate drawing while going over my forms, bringing them up to the new contour or adding volume. And so the work is not lost entirely. Notice also how the work progresses from around the pelvis, which is the core and the first decision we made on our sculpture, towards the upper torso, which is still in the rougher stages. I jump back and forth a bit because it keeps things fresh for me. I'm not working too much in one way, in one fashion, and the sculpture feels like it's progressing faster as well, even though it might not be. But it is important to not leave an area behind for too long, I think. And once I feel confident about the decisions made further down the sculpture towards the pelvis or the box, I can begin making decisions further up and should make those decisions and make sure the work progresses forward so that I can get a look at the whole sculpture sooner rather than later. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did and want to learn sculpture from me or just support the channel, check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critiques on people's work and we can talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. And right now there is exclusive sculpting content on my Patreon. The first series we have embarked on is the beginner's guide to figure sculpture. I'm super excited to finally be creating exclusive content for Patreon, and I hope you will be too and will take a look. The link to my Patreon page is in the description below the video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share it with your friends and family. It helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.